All right, welcome to the video. Um, this is section 6.2, which is graphing sine and cosine with a phase shift. Um, so what I'm going to do is do a couple examples. First, I'll talk about a, what a phase shift is, and then I'll do a couple of examples on how we use phase shift in graphing these without a calculator. So just um, a phase shift is just simply a shifting of the graph left or right um, horiz horizontally. So as we, you know, if we added, if we added a number here, on the outside, then that would shift it up or down. And recall that um, you know, when we're dealing with functions, when we have a function and we added or subtracted a number inside the parentheses, we would, this would be a translation to the left or right depending on what this, uh, if this was a minus or a plus. And if it was a minus, then we would shift to the right. If it was a plus, we would shift to the left. So we're going to keep that in mind when we look at the phase shift. So the phase shift is simply a shift to the left or the right. Um, the phase shift can be found. Phase shift can be found by using the formula negative c over b. Now some books use c over b, some use negative c over b, but it really just depends on um, if you make sure you understand if it goes left or the right. It really doesn't matter if you use negative or positive. Just make sure you know which one which direction you're going in. So in this case, um, negative pi, negative times a negative is a positive, so we're going to pi over b, b here in this case is 1, so b is 1, so we're doing a shift pi units, um, and this is going to go to the right. I know it's going to go to the right because I have a negative inside, and a negative inside, remember, tells us that we're going to shift to the right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we could do a table of values, but what we're re really going to do is use just some step-by-step -step graphing. We're going to graph 3 cosine x first, and then we'll do our phase shift, okay? So um, in, in, let's do this in red here, or in orange. Uh, we'll go ahead and graph y equals 3 cosine x, okay? So remember that the cosine function starts on the y-axis, comes down through pi over 2, then down to, in this case, negative 3 because we have a 3 for our amplitude. And then back through 3 pi over 2 and over to 2 pi. Because the period here is 2 pi. So I have to start here and end in the same place. So then I'm going to go ahead and draw my, forgive me if I draw kind of messed up here. I'll do the best I can with my little Moby. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And so then we'll go ahead and draw this, like this. Okay, so that's the uh, graph of y equals cosine x. Um, what we'll want to do here is we want to move this pi units to the right. So let's go ahead and um, take each of these major points, the maxims and minimums, and where it crosses the x-axis, so the zeros, and we're gonna we're gonna put an arrow showing where this is gonna move to the right. So from here, this is pi over two units, and then we want to go all the way pi units. So this point is gonna be moved all the way over here. This point is gonna move all the way over here. This point is gonna be moved all the way over there. This point is going to be moved all the way over there. And this point's going to be moved all the way over there. Okay, so let's go and draw these points. This point gets moved there. This point gets moved here. This point here. This point got moved all the way over here. This point got moved all the way over here. So these are my new points. Okay, so I'm going to start here. This is actually, since this was our starting point, we had kind of moved this all the way over pi units. So we could, if we wanted, start here and go down. Okay, so we shifted this whole graph over pi units. Now, in our window here, this is where it's going to look. Okay, and then let's go ahead and shift, um, shift this one all the way over pi units here. So that goes up here, and this one goes all the way over pi units here, and like that. 
Okay, and we can continue if we wanted to. And this will be our graph of our function. Okay, so all you have to remember is that what you're doing is you're need you're just needing to take those points, those those real those major points, the maximums, the minimums, and you just shift it over. Okay, let's take another uh, let's take a look at another example that has a period change um, as well as a phase shift. So now we have a period change as well as a phase shift, and we also have a negative here. So what we need to do here is let's first find the period. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph y equals negative 2 sine of 2x. Then we're going to do our phase shift. So let's write over here, and this time in, pink, in red here. I'm going to write our, this, this graph is going to be in red. Our phase shift is going to be pi over 2 divided by b, which is 2. So our phase shift here is going to be pi over 4. So after I graph this graph here, I'm going to move it pi over 4 units to the right, okay, because this is negative. All right, so let's go ahead and graph um, this one here, negative 2 sine 2x. So this has a change in period. The period here is... 2 pi over b, 2 pi over b, so I'm going to have a period of pi. So uh, my normal sine x graph, okay, my sine x graph is going to look like this. Um, let's see, it's going to go here, and then here, and then down through here, and then back up, okay? But I want to have a negative 2 sine of 2x. So I'm still going to start at 0. But instead of going up to 2, I'm going to go down to negative 2. Now, however, this has a period of pi, meaning that I have to start here and end here. I have to go up, then down, then back up and end at pi. So um, halfway between pi is at pi over 2. That means I'm going to have, that's where I'm going to come back through. And instead of going up to 2, because I have a negative, I'm going to go down to negative 2. And then up to positive 2. So now I'm going to draw my sine curve this way. All right. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just continue the graph so we can see the whole graph here. At least a, a 0 to 2 pi version of that. I cannot draw straight to save my life here. All right. Oh, that one turned out better. You're probably watching this little video of me on the side here going, wow, he is intently looking at that board there. Okay, so now I have this. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the shift now. So now that I have the, the period down, I have y equals negative 2 sine 2x. I'm going to shift it over. And how much am I going to shift it over? Pi over 4 units. So let's go ahead and, and do our shift here, pi over 4 units. It's the wrong color here. Um, so I'm going to take this point here, and I'm going to go over pi over 4. Here's pi over 2. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. So I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to shift it over right there. This point, shift it over right there. In this case, it's just one, like one box here, one unit little measure. Okay, so now that I, I moved over a few of these, I'm going to go ahead and graph. That. And you should be able to start seeing the pattern and see that movement there, okay? And you can go ahead and, and continue and finish this graph. Make sure that when you do draw this, you do it with um, s some level of precision. You know, obviously I'm not very good at trying with this little pad here, but, um, you know, make sure you go through the points that are necessary to go through. You don't want to go through, you know, the middle here. Um, you know, your teacher, if you're doing this for my class, I'm going to want you to at least show that you understood what points these are and that you label the axes correctly. 
Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, those are the two examples that, that, that you should look at. Uh, make sure that when you have a chance, you try another one that uses a change in period and a change in phase shift. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for joining me. That's it for me today.